Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about retro video games. This week I played a classic shoot 'em up on the NES for the first time. Based on the cover art, it's a game about fighting killer carrots. It's Gun Neck. Gun Neck was developed by Compile and released for the NES in 1991. It's a scrolling vertical shooter that puts you in control of Commander Gun Neck. Inanimate objects like animals, plants, and products have been springing to life and attacking people. It's up to you to find the source of this problem and defeat it. My first impression of this game was that it looks a lot like the spaceship shooter portions of The Guardian Legend, another game I love, and this sort of makes sense considering they have the same developer. However, though a number of the visuals and even sound effects are almost identical, the gameplay mechanics themselves are different enough that it doesn't just feel like a copy. Gunnack is a classic vertical spaceship shooter, with a few twists. There are five different weapons you'll have access to throughout the game. Each comes from a floating power-up block labeled with a number. Picking up the same number you already have will power up your current weapon, while picking up a new number will change your weapon. From your basic straight-ahead stream of bullets, to beams of fire, to a triple laser, the weapons all play differently and have their own strengths and weaknesses. The power-ups make a noticeable difference by changing your bullet stream to a spread shot, making your projectiles larger, or giving you the ability to shoot out to the sides. Weapon number three is a smart weapon that auto-targets your enemies, and it's as close to an easy mode as Gunnack is going to offer you. Besides the weapon power-ups, there are also four different kinds of bombs you can pick up, differentiated by different letters. As with the weapons, picking up the same bomb will make it more powerful, while picking up a different one will change which one you have equipped. The different bombs also feel quite different. W literally rains havoc down on the whole screen, while F is more contained damage, but it lasts longer. While bombs are always useful, I find them especially good against the bosses. However, when you deploy a bomb, your weapon temporarily switches back to the weakest one and power-ups are disabled. This can leave you vulnerable. Besides the weapons and bombs, there are a number of other pickups. Small power-up chips power up your current weapon no matter which one it is. The enemy eraser will kill everything on screen. And picking up a wing will give you armor and allow you to take two hits instead of the usual one before losing a life. A ship pickup will give you an extra life, plus armor if you need it. And little blue and yellow helpers, another visual taken straight from the Guardian legend, will give you random objects if you touch them. Between areas, there's a shop where you can spend the money you've collected. Here you can buy weapon power-ups or wings, bombs for upcoming levels, or turbo power. Turbo power wasn't really explained, but it seemed like a good thing to max out. I think it increased the rate of fire, but I'm not 100% on that. There are eight areas in total, and each is a decent length. All of them feature a midpoint boss, along with an end boss. Generally, I found the bosses easier than the rest of the levels, especially if I had a lot of bombs stored up. The visuals are impressive, and the music is both fun and catchy. Each area has a completely different look and different types of enemies. The first area features killer bunnies and attacking carrots, while in another you're being attacked by plants, wood, and paper products. In the fifth area, you're being attacked by gold bars and coins in a bank. There are definitely some unique ideas in this game. The idea of the products we consume every day rising up and attacking us is a little alarming. Perhaps Gunnack is a warning about the dangers of consumer culture or the damage we're doing to our environment. Maybe it's a takedown of the evils of capitalism. Or maybe it's just weird.
The game doesn't start out too challenging, and the first few areas do a good job at easing you into the game. By the halfway mark, things get a bit tough. There are more enemies on screen, and their movements become more unpredictable. By the time you get to Area 7, where you have to bob and weave through heat flares from the sun, things get pretty intense. Luckily, there are unlimited continues, and you can get extra lives fairly frequently through score or pickups. I had a hard time finding fault with this game. Occasionally, it's hard to differentiate colorful flashing enemy projectiles from a sometimes similarly colored flashing background, though that's an issue most shmups run into at some point or another. Also, the manual kinda sucks. I didn't know until after I finished the game that I could press select to change the speed of my ship. Honestly, I'm kinda grasping at straws as far as criticism goes. Gunnack is a very solid, extremely fun game, which is unsurprising given the pedigree of its developers. It provides a good challenge, great controls and music, and interesting, slightly offbeat environments and enemies. I wholeheartedly recommend this one. Unfortunately, it is a rare game, so it's currently price charting around $150. However, if you can get your hands on it, whether it be the cartridge or some other way, I recommend it. It's worth your time. If you have any recommendations or requests for games that I review in upcoming episodes, leave me a comment. Uh, this week I got a hold of an AV to HDMI upscaler, which is very good news because it means I'll be able to record footage from more retro consoles and the gameplay will look extra nice. I'm particularly looking forward to playing some Sega CD. Anyways, thank you for watching, likes and shares are always appreciated, and I'll see you next time.